If you've ever seen Crazy Rich Asians, there's an amazing scene in there where they're making dumplings all together as a family. And that's exactly what we do here. We set up almost like an assembly line. Hi guys, and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are going to be making some homemade Chinese dumplings. To be quite honest, when I first started considering making a cooking channel to help educate people about different types of cuisines, different foods, different recipes, the first thing that came to mind is dumplings. We make dumplings all the time at our house, but if you haven't made them before, they can seem like a bit of a daunting thing to do. So today I'm going to show you how simple it is to make dumplings, especially if you have a team with you. This is one of those dishes where it's really fun to sit down with the whole family. Everybody gets a job and then it goes by in a flash. Today I'm going to be doing it solo just to show you, you can do it all by yourself, but if you have a few family or friends around, encourage them to come join you as well. Running through the ingredients for our dumplings. For the dough, we're just gonna be using some regular white flour, some salt to taste, and a little bit of water as well. For the filling inside, today we're making a pork dumpling, so we're using ground pork. Typically you see pork and cabbage, so cabbage is our main vegetable for today. We're using Napa cabbage. To add flavor to the filling inside, we have some fresh ground pepper, sesame oil, and some light soy sauce. As well, to add extra flavor to the filling, we have some garlic and ginger, two bunches of scallions for today, and what might be a new ingredient to some of you, some garlic scapes. These are like the garlic shoots, or what grows out of the garlic. They have a great flavor without having too much of just that fresh raw garlic bite to it. One thing that I did want to mention is today we're going to be making a pork based dumpling. So pork is a protein inside the dumpling. Often in the grocery store you'll see pork and leek, pork and cabbage, pork and green onion. You'll often see those outside at different Chinese restaurants as well. Today our base is pork and cabbage, but we're also going to be adding in some extra veggies. One reason that we put in so many different types of veggies into the dumpling, besides the fact that moms are always trying to get you to eat more vegetables, is it creates a lot of moisture inside of that dumpling, so it's not gonna come out very dry. These Chinese dumplings are different than a Japanese dumpling like a gyoza, which is just meat inside of the dough. So for these ones, we do include a little few extra veggies than perhaps is normal, just to make sure it's super moist, very juicy and tasty inside the dumpling. Truth be told, the filling that goes inside the dumpling is 100% up to you. It's whatever you want to go inside. Adapt the filling however you want it. This is what we do. You can take out the onion, you can take out the garlic scape, you can use just cabbage, you can swap the whole filling, do a pork and mushroom or something like that. It's 100% up to you, but the recipe and the method that we still follow will stay the same. The first thing that we're going to start with is going to be the dough for the dumplings. We want to do this first so we give the dough enough time to rest and enough time to rise while we're preparing everything else. Today I'm going to be using my stand mixer to help mix my dough. You do not have to have a stand mixer. You can use an electric mixer if you want to mix the dough. You can mix it by hand. You can mix it using some chopsticks. It's definitely up to you. I'll start with the chopsticks and then I'll go over to the stand mixer just because I have it here and it's available. I am still eyeballing a lot of the ingredients, but I will include an in-depth recipe in the description box below. So check that out. You can still follow step by step. I'll be writing down exactly how much I use of everything once I've finalized all of the ingredients being put into the dough. For the dough, we're using our flour, about three-ish cups of flour. I've got some salt, just a little bit, a pinch to add some flavor about a cup of water that gets added in gradually. If we notice our dough is way too sticky, add a little bit more flour. If we notice it's way too dry, add a little bit more water. So it's very easy to adapt. Now that the dough is finished mixing in the stand mixer, I'm actually going to take the dough out and knead it by hand a little bit. There are still some things that a machine can't do, so it will take a little bit of kneading just to make it look nice and smooth. Thank you. 
Okay, the dough is finished kneading, so I've just put a little bit of oil inside the bowl so the dough won't stick. I'm gonna cover that with some cling film. You could also cover it just with a towel if you want. There isn't any yeast in here, so it's not necessarily gonna rise a whole bunch, but it's just there to sit, to rest a little bit. And then we'll come back to this probably in about 30 minutes, all of our prep time will be done. So it is time to start chopping up our Napa cabbage. I always start with the cabbage first after the dough is done because we actually wanna get a lot of the water out of the cabbage. So we'll peel this out, give it a quick rinse, and then we'll start to cut it up. All of the veggies that we're using are actually gonna be diced up quite finely because we don't wanna have huge chunks of veggies in the dumplings. The dumplings themselves are quite small, so you don't want the vegetables to overpower that. All of the chopped cabbage will go in there and we're actually going to heavily salt the cabbage. The salt drains all of that water out of the cabbage and then you can squeeze even more out of the cabbage before you start to put it in the filling. All of the cabbage is chopped up, so we got a really, really, really fine dice on that cabbage here. Now it's time to salt the cabbage. Taking the salt and generously putting that all over the cabbage. Once you've salted the cabbage, you do want to mix it all up. And this is going to stay put and hang tight while we fix everything else up. We're gonna set this over to the side and start chopping up the rest of our veggies. to start building our filling. Quick recap, we've got our salted cabbage in here. When we started, the cabbage was sort of right up towards the top of the bowl. It's shrunk down a lot in size to about half of the size that it was before. Our spring onions, just a quick chop there. Our garlic scapes, nice and small, so no big hard chunks in the dumplings. And then we have our garlic and ginger. A very fine chop on both of these, finer if you will, even on the ginger. We don't want any huge pieces of ginger to give that kind of bite as you're eating the dumpling. We just want a little bit of flavor in there. We're going to dig in and squeeze out as much water as we can from the cabbage. It's kind of incredible how much is even left in there. We need all of our muscles for this one. Now, like I mentioned before, making dumplings on your own, it's not daunting. It just takes a lot of time. Making dumplings with friends and family, now that's fun. If you've ever seen Crazy Rich Asians, there's an amazing scene in there where they're making dumplings all together as a family. And that's exactly what we do here. We set up almost like an assembly line. The prep, we each take a job, we each do something there. And then when it comes to actually folding the dumplings, we each have a job and we have something there. It works out really well, which is pretty fun. So you saw that huge thing of Napa cabbage that we had at the beginning. Once it's been salted and just left to rest for about 10, 15 minutes, once it's all rested, this is all we're left with. A small little soup bowl of cabbage. And inside this bowl, we've got tons and tons of juice. I'm actually going to take our residual cabbage juice and pour it into another small dish, only because condo living, I don't have that many big bowls, and I'm actually gonna use this giant bowl to create our pork filling. So I'm gonna carefully pour this into a separate dish. There really is a substantial amount of water. Ooh, 
Ooh, perfect fit. That's roughly about a cup. So we got about a cup of water out of just that cabbage juice alone. I'm gonna give this a rinse and then we're gonna come back and put all of our filling together. It is time to finally assemble the filling for our dumplings. So I'm gonna start with the ground pork and put that in our nice clean bowl over here. Some people like to mix this by hand. Some people will do it with chopsticks, with the spoon. I'll start with chopsticks and then we'll kind of see where that takes us. So I've got my meat in here. I'm just breaking that apart. And then I'll start by adding in our sauces. We're gonna use some sesame oil for some flavor, some light soy sauce, get that mixing in all together. When making dumplings, the filling that's going inside, it's different than making something else with ground meat. We're not looking for the consistency or texture of a meatball or a hamburger or anything like that. We're almost looking for a meat paste. All right, cracked black pepper. If you have white pepper, that would actually suit this recipe really well too. Like I was saying, meat paste, it doesn't sound very appetizing, but when we start to mix it together, you'll see exactly what I mean. That's why we cut that residual water, because we can pour that into our mixture to get it into that paste. So even right now, I've got our ground pork, it's mixing together, but it is a little bit dry. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that water and pour it in. As we start to add in the other vegetables, those two will start to oops, lose some of their water just from the salt and the soy sauce that's been added in here. Pouring in our cabbage. It smells really good. Okay, I'm gonna add in our ginger and our garlic. So the cabbage has been mixed in there. That would be a pork and cabbage filling, but it is still a little bit too dry, so adding in that residual water. We'll probably end up using all of that water to create the paste that we're looking for for our dumplings. All right, let's pop in those spring onions. So you can see we're kind of going one ingredient at a time. I don't want to overpower everything else. And I also want to make sure everything is evenly dispersed. It's getting a little bit tough again to mix up, so that lets me know we need a little bit more water. You can see just by adding in those spring onions, it adds so much more volume. So by adding in the extra veggies, you'll get more dumplings. Plus, you can get a few more flavor combinations as well. Okay, lastly, those garlic scapes go in. This is a flavor that we just happen to have, especially during summer when all of these ingredients are in season and we can get them from a local farmer's market. But when that isn't the case, when you go out for dim sum or even hit up the frozen food aisle at your local grocery store, what flavor of dumplings do you go for? I'd love to try something new. A Little bit more of that water. Awesome, this looks fantastic. Exactly what we're looking for. You can't see the little bit of ground pork anymore, the ground pieces, I mean. It really looks like a paste. Everything is really well mixed together and ready to go. Now that the filling is done, I've covered that and just put it towards the back out of the way. It's time to take a look at the dough and see how that is doing. I'm going to flour my surface just a little bit to make sure that the dough doesn't stick and then knead it just a little bit more to bring it back to life. Typically I might just cut this in half and work half at a time. Today I'm gonna to take it one step further just because it's me and go and use a quarter of the dough. Okay? So that's all I'm going to use for now. The rest can go back into our container here. So kneading the little bit that we are going to use for our first round of dumplings. So the dough has been rolled out into a relatively straight line. Now I'm gonna do is cut the dough in half and then cut these pieces about three quarters of an inch. When rolling dumplings, it is a little bit different than rolling out cookies or something like that. I'm gonna be using a different type of rolling pin. 
I like to turn them on their side and kind of give them a bit of a flatten down. It helps me get started. So the way that traditionally it's done is you hold one side of the dumpling wrapper and then in the other hand, you have your rolling pin and you actually start from the middle using your palm, pull back to thin out that side and then turn it. So again, in the middle using your palm, pull back, turn it. In the middle using your palm, pull back, turn it. This way we're getting a nice thin edge. It's okay if the middle is thicker because that's well where the meat and the filling is going to be. But what we don't want is to have really, really thick edges because that's where things are going to be folded over on each other. take a little bit of that dumpling filling and put it right inside. Always making sure that it's right in the center. I have about a tablespoon here. Now I'm going to fold it in half. So half here, I want these two to connect and I'm gonna give that a nice pinch. That should ideally seal part of our dumpling. Starting on one side, take two pieces, hold them together, one from one side, one from the other, pinch together, pull over and pleat. One from one side, one for the other, pinch together, pull over and pleat. This recipe yields a ton of dumplings, mostly because when I make dumplings with my family, we'll make them and freeze them and use them for the next week or so. Also, it's really fun to be able to make these with a group of people and be able to send somebody home with something that they made. A quick little hack that we often do is if you ever buy frozen dumplings from the grocery store, you can save the styrofoam that it comes in. I clean them off and then I can use these to actually take some of my dumplings that I've made to help freeze them properly. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna take a few that I'm not gonna be cooking, just lay these out, ready to go. Throw a little bit of wrap over that and then they're good to last in the freezer. Now I'm going to show you three different ways that we can actually cook up our dumplings. And any of the ways that we're going to be doing today, you can cook from frozen, which is great. One way to cook up your dumplings is to simply boil these. Again, this is a great option if you're cooking from frozen and you just want something nice and quick. So I filled up my pot here about three quarters of the way full. I'm gonna put this on the burner and bring it to a rolling boil. Once it's at a boil, then I'll drop in however many dumplings I'm wanting to cook. And once everything comes back up to a boil, as soon as the dumplings start to float, that's sort of your indicator that they are done and it's ready to take them out and enjoy. The second way that you can cook up your dumplings is to steam them. So I have a bamboo steamer here. You can get stainless steel steamers as well that sometimes are built in or fit into the pots and pans that you already have at home. If you are using a bamboo steamer, it can be quite highly likely that your dumplings will stick. So to avoid the sticking, you could put a little bit of oil inside of your steamer. I've seen people sometimes use cabbage, like the Napa cabbage. If there were some pieces that you didn't use, you could use that, kind of create a bed and put the dumplings on top to avoid sticking. I have these cheesecloth wraps that actually fit right into the steamer. So I'm gonna use those for today. So just a few to show you what it looks like once they're steamed. Three for now, I'll have a little midday snack and then I'll pop these on top of the pot with the steam. The last cooking method and maybe my favorite is to pan fry the dumplings. There's something about that crispy dough. I don't know, when it crisps up with the sesame oil, it's so good. So I'm gonna take this, pop it on the burner towards the back and put it at about a medium heat and then put some sesame oil inside. And then I'm going to take a few of these dumplings in here and put them into the pan, right side up. I leave those for just a little bit so they can start to fry in that oil. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of water, just enough water so it covers about one third of the dumpling. And you know that the dumplings are ready to be eaten when all the water is cooked off. 
While the dumplings are finishing cooking up, the last thing that we need to do is create our sauce to dip the dumplings in. I have a few different things that we tend to add. The first thing is some black vinegar, okay? This is gonna give a really nice acidity and light soy sauce. That way it adds a little bit of that saltiness as well. Some people like to add in some sesame oil, so I'll include that. And then often at Chinese restaurants, you'll see white pepper, but again, ground black pepper works just the same if you happen to like a little bit of pepper. The most important thing in any good sauce is the chilies. So we actually have right now just three different types of chili sauce that were in the fridge. Classic sambal, another garlic chili sauce. Then the last one is this chili oil. It's up to you what you want to include. I feel like going all out, so I'm gonna put a little bit of everything in here. So here we have the three different ways that we can cook our dumplings. We've got our boiled dumplings, pan-fried dumplings, and our steamed dumplings. You can eat them and cook them however you like. Of course, we cannot forget our dipping sauce. Let's see. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Those are good. There are so many veggies in there that even though this one's been cut open and I was taking a few photos, it's still really juicy. It hasn't even dried out. Mm. Well, I have dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next few days with all the dumplings that I've made. Let me know what you wanna see me make next. I've got a few more ideas up my sleeve, but I'm really curious to see what you like, what kind of foods you're interested in. For the next video, comments are down below. I'll also put the full recipe down below as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video. There's no better place to learn than in my kitchen, right? Bye guys.